Amanda Seyfried has been in the spotlight since her teen years, getting her start in the daytime soap operas, remember, as the world turns, <laughs> all my children. Yeah, since then, Amanda has starred in nearly 60 movies and TV series, including fan favorites <laughs> like Tina Fey's Mean Girls and the musical Mamma Mia with Meryl Streep. Yeah, uh, now Amanda takes on one of her biggest roles yet. It's the new drama. It's called Mank which is already getting Oscar buzz. Amanda, hi, good to see you. Hi, guys. When you hear Oscar buzz. I mean, come on, girl. Does that kind of wake you up? <laughs> Yeah, it's thrilling. Listen, I've, I've, um, I, I have no expectations. I keep my expectations very low. So when things like this happen, I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised. And also, it feels really good because I, I feel like we all worked really hard on it. And so, um, it's just, it's a, it's a really, it's a really good feeling all around. Well, it's such a cool movie from such an interesting era. Uh, and I was just thinking what it was, what it was like to be you, to immerse yourself into this era of Herman Mankiewicz and all the rest. And also it was in black and white. Yes. What did it feel like being in that era? It's, uh, yeah, well, listen, Fincher doesn't make any mistakes, really. He, he creates a world that feels so authentic. And, you know, when you think about 1930s Hollywood, it just feels so far away. And I always saw myself as a very modern actress. And I was like, how am I going to jump into this? But it was really kind of easy in some ways because I felt like the, the costumes, the makeup, the hair, the, the, the set pieces, that was all there. But... And it was a dream that I didn't know I had. I mean, I, I, what, what, how many opportunities do you get to, to play a 1930s era movie star in, in a way in, in like this? Your accent in this movie is really, <laughs> it's, real it's something. It is spot on. Yeah. How do you, yes. How'd you do how'd that? How'd you do it? I, I, listen, my trick is to do it, everything very subtly, um, Mild is really the only way I think that I I can get away with something that's not natural. It's not a natural accent for me. So, and I my biggest fear is to distract people and it sound terrible. So I just did a mild Brooklyn accent. You did. <laughs> well, it worked. Well, you've got so much new uh, going on in your life. First of all, congratulations! Yes. A new baby came in September. You've got two kids. <laughs> Look at you. How, how is life as a mom of two? Still trying to get out the vote. Um, it's, <laughs> listen, I, my husband and I, after my daughter had gone to bed, were just staring down at this little fella, this little sunbeam in our lives. And I didn't, you know, you never think that you can love something as much as your kid. And then you have another kid and you're like, this is, I don't know. I listen, I'm very lucky to be on my farm and feel really safe and and get to work from home and, you know, run off and go feed my son. And it's really, I feel just really grateful. I'm telling you, I, two kids is a lot more than one. <laughs> and my mom lives with us. She's lived with us since day one as the full-time nanny. And I will say that three parents to two kids is not enough. And I realize how ridiculous that sounds for the people that don't have three parents in their lives. Um, I am grateful for every second that I have that my mom gets to be part yes. of this. I mean, that, that <laughs> sounds so beautiful to watch her <laughs> hold those babies yeah. must be one of the most beautiful sights. It's really beautiful. And then when I see her doing something that I think might have negatively affected me and I'm like, you stop that. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm parenting my mom, but we're all learning, you know, it's everybody has a different style, but she raised me well, so 80% of what she does is okay with me. Well, we heard the one thing that's not okay with your daughter is you singing. She don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's embarrassed. Listen, she started singing, and I have to tell her to bring it down. I'm like, can you just take it down a notch? Um, which is amazing. I hope she becomes a singer. Wow. So you know, by the oh, way, yeah. your, your, your voice is in my house with yeah. Mama Mia, so yes. I think she needs to just know. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're Team Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That we Thanks. Go, you're we welcome. vote for you singing in every right. household. Thank you so much, honey. <laughs> oh, we should God, point out, you. guys, Mank, by the way, streaming on yes. Netflix right now. Thanks, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Seifert, and this is my pet tale. Finny is almost 10, and he's an Aussie Shepherd Border Collie mix. I met Finn um, 
outside of the studio when I was working on Men Show Big Love uh, when I was, I guess, oh god, 22, 23, 24. God, it feels like I've had it my whole life. So I was working and I saw this dog on set and it looked like a bear and I was like, what is that? And he's like, that's a dog, a puppy dog. Our production coordinator just adopted this dog from the uh, set deck. And at that moment, like in time, I was looking to foster a dog while my ex was in town visiting me and I just thought it would be fun. I said, hey, uh, you got any more dogs? He's like, yeah, I got a female and a male. I was like, can I have the male? Is that okay? And he's like, yeah, sure. I'll bring the male back at uh, lunch break. Go home, grab them, bring them to you, and I'll get it. was literally it. I had, I drove home with this tiny little puppy with his belly was distended because he had eaten too much food because he couldn't control how much he ate. Like a lot of dogs, most dogs are like that actually. And uh, I took him to the vet, gave him, got him some x-rays, and while I was waiting, I was with a friend of mine. I was like, is he gonna be okay? And I was like, oh my God, this is my dog. So that's it, that was, I was some age and uh, I've never looked back. Oh God, I you know, twenties. Your twenties are uh, can be very tough. It's just kind of when you start evolving into who you're going to be, hopefully, and as a human. And I, I had a lot of heartbreaks. I had a lot of questionable times. I had a lot of um, emotional um, traumas just by being alive, really, and thin from when I got him to now has seen me through every moment and made me feel like I was gonna get through it. He really does, he helps me, he helped me find my center and he really did leave space for me to feel like I could find my solitude and I did. I'm, I'm like super independent now whereas I used to be so afraid of leaving my mother and I had a lot of issues with living alone when I was younger and he's made me He's, he's helped me carve out a space for myself where I can feel safe alone, which is really essential to my well-being in life in general, um, because we can't always be with, you know, surrounded by people all the time. And it's been just the biggest life lesson. He's given me everything. Finn is my artistic muse. I I realized that I love directing because of him. I He would be my lead actor in little movies that I've made. You can project anything onto a dog's face. This is why Art of Racing in the Rain works so well. That we project our feelings onto them. You know, we they're animals, but like we project real human emotions and human ego onto them, which they don't have egos. And it's really funny to do that with Finn, you know, when I make little videos. Um, I love putting shirts on him and making him eat with like a silverware with my hands, I put, I sit behind him and put my hands through. I saw someone do it on um, YouTube a long time ago, so I copied it and I've been doing it ever since. He just does whatever I want him to do. Does Finn have any senses? Finn's senses are very acute, for sure. I trust that his instincts are going to protect us if we we're ever in danger, so we live on a farm in rural New York. I don't know, I mean, he, whenever I'm crying, but this, is the, uh, this is true of a lot of dogs, I think it's just the salt of our tears, really, that they want to lick. But whenever I'm having a hard time or crying, he gets really upset. And whenever my daughter cries, he cries, like he sings. And I don't know if it's a frequency thing or an emotional frequency thing. I'd like to think it's both, which I think is amazing. But they can see the other side. They see through things that we, as humans, just don't have the abilities to see. I look to him sometimes for, for, I don't know, for the right answer, I guess. Sometimes he's just, can like call into my, my own instincts. I know that sounds weird, but that's what happens. Because that's the kind of connection we have. I've decided that he would closely resemble Seth Avid from the Avid Brothers. Because he's got that nice, Lilting southern draw, not too strong. You always understand, very calm. Seth, you are very calm. Um, so I feel like I would be so lucky if Finn, Finn's voice were close to Seth's. Finn is very docile since I, he was a puppy. Finn has always been very calming. He's had such a calming effect on me. He's just a peaceful guy. 
He's very patient. He's uh, can be very playful, but he doesn't need a lot of exercise. He doesn't need a lot of attention. He just likes to be with me. And he's really the perfect travel companion too in that respect because he doesn't make any waves. He's just kind of moves with the crowd and, and, and you know, watches my back. It's, it's, he's perfect. He's perfect. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.